I will be discussing care of the client with a head injury. At the conclusion of this video, the nurse should be able to identify the appropriate care for a client with a head injury. In addition, need to know terminology and nursing care in order to provide that appropriate care. Let's begin with assessment. Assessment of a skull fracture. You may see battle sign, which is ecchymosis over the mastoid bone, raccoon eyes, which is bilateral periorbital edema, rhinorrhea or otorrhea. Rhinorrhea is clear fluid from the nose, otorrhea is clear fluid from the ears, and the clear fluid would be CSF. Continuing with assessment for a contusion, slight depression of consciousness all the way up to coma, decorticate posturing, which is flexion and internal rotation of the arms and hands, decerebrate posturing, which is extension and external rotation of forearms and hands, the decerebrate indicates deeper dysfunction. You may also see generalized cerebral edema. A concussion will show transient confusion or loss of consciousness. Headache, loss of memory concerning surrounding the event that caused the concussion. Long-term effects could be lack of concentration and personality changes. Laceration would show a penetrating trauma with bleeding. Hematoma, it can be epidural hematoma, which shows short periods of unconsciousness, ipsilateral pupillary dilation, or weakness of contralateral extremities. A subdural hematoma takes longer to present, will also show with decreased level of consciousness, also ipsilateral pupillary dilation, and weakness of the contralateral extremities. Let's talk a bit about implementation, how you're going to provide clients with head injuries with their care. You're going to check level of consciousness, vital signs, I and O, neurological assessment, assess pupil size, shape, equality, and reaction to light, evaluate nose and ears for CSF leakage. Again, remember it's called rhinorrhea or otorrhea. Elevate the head of the bed 30 degrees. That helps to decrease the intracranial pressure. More implementations here. Barbiturate therapy, which decreases cerebral metabolic rate as well as hypothermia, which decreases metabolic demands. Glucocorticoids, minimal procedures, meaning only do procedures that are absolutely necessary. You need to limit extra procedures, cluster the care so that you're doing a few things at once. You're not coming in every hour to do a procedure because many procedures and activities can increase intracranial pressure. Seizure precautions, and that would be care for clients with a head injury. We have a practice question here. If you selected C, you would be correct. If we look at A, giving false reassurance does not acknowledge the parent's feelings. B, again, does not acknowledge the parent's feelings. Minimizes concern by offering a booklet. Does not get involved. It's almost like passing the buck to the booklet rather than sitting and talking to the client. C is the correct answer. It must be frightening to see your child hurt. You're letting the parent know you understand how they feel. You're showing empathy. Communication without judgment, without giving advice, with listening, with giving information, having some silence to let them fill in, giving them a place to say how they're feeling. And D is not correct. It's too soon to know the outcome. You like to talk with the health care provider. That's also passing the buck. It's saying, we don't know what's going to happen. Let me have you talk to someone else. 